Hello there. Can you hear me okay? Okay. <clears throat> well, it's great to be here. I've been sitting enjoying um, listening to everything. Um, so I thought I'd start with a poem about, about making sound. Bee House. This barn with the glass roof you made to let in the sky, to be an orangery, all day draws bees up to its panes where they bewilder and vibrate, passing the hours of daylight, making pure sound from lost honey. No way to help them out, nowhere for the bees to go, but over, across, and back again. All they can do is resound the stones with their drone, a fundamental longing for the pulsing sky, the promising green of the garden and the field beyond, for the stopping moment of warm, quiet foraging in the quiver of a flower. Not this empty bumping and seeking until dusk comes and shows them out of the window that was always there. I should say that um, it seems that every poet has a, a bee poem, at least one, in them somewhere. That was mine. Ah. Um, as a mother of a three-year-old, you find yourself um, spending a long time looking at diggers. New road. How long have we been standing in the rain? Small son, novice mum, both air drying our own tears, watching a drowned ritual where each wordless man knows his role, his turn, his tool, his time. There is the thick, hot pouring of tarmac, obliterating smell with its cleanness, the deft sprinkling from a finger blackened watering can while the whacker plate, too loud for trivialities, empties mind to make itself space. The wrapped passage of the steamroller, so heavy it rumbles in your ankles, tamping each sharp edge of gravel into something like smooth night with soothing mistrifts of steam crossing cloud forest mountains, sounds the deep notes of sleep after rage. When the sobbing heart spreads out, when will is set straight by remorse. How long will we stand here and wait, watching as the block knocks lays, watching as the old road fades, its crumbled markings, worn lettering, cross habits, wheel skid patterns, and weary camber. Attentive men with rakes and shovels make it go away. Now the painters with chalk line come to make bold, clear, straight signs. Sun, time to unstick ourselves and move on. Sorry to do so much paper shuffling. <laughs> right. I'm going to read one from um, exactly my own length, called Map. On the day they find me, they'll slip me along my seams and peel me out of my skin. They'll dig out a pit for the rest, white tendons and hashed flesh, flopped innards full of stink. What they want is my hide, they want it beaten flat, the eyes punched in like glass. Thrashed and stretched and tanned Until pores show through the sand And there's five peninsulas to a hand Until nipples spread to ridges And silver pink scars are rivers Stitched across with bridges When it's taut and dry They'll back it onto a grid Trace on dotted lines Circle round the ridges Add crosses for the mines Rename all the bridges So 
sounds like my house out there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this one's about my grandfather. Jubilee portraits, number one. Taken 50 years ago in black and white, developed with the enlarger he made from a gun sight on a ship in Kiel, waiting to be demobbed. Sunshots on the beach at Western Supermare. Caravans, ice cream, donkeys, it's all there. The proof that their fun is as good as anyone's. The top one shows she never swims, just paddles. She will always hold that small hand tight. She will always worry that the tide is going out. Her job is to show its best in the shallows. His is to watch, record, agree. His lips do move, but inaudibly. The man who repaired the guns, but didn't fire them. The man who took the photos, but wasn't in them. And I should say that my, my grandfather took the photograph, which is on the front cover of the book, um, a picture of my mum skipping at Western Supermare with the caravan behind, and. Um, developed on the enlarger made from a gun, gun sight, which he kept in the garden shed. <clears throat> number three. Into number three they poured the past, the present, and the future, held in the space between four walls. The past tied up in the deposit, the present in the sum paid out each week, the future in someone else's pocket. They own the same rooms as next door, walls that stayed lean even in fatter times, windows too stiff to open for new air. Hope went into flowers that outgrew borders, ambition into the hammering in the shed, happiness into gaps so small it had to bow its head. This is a new poem which speaks to that one. It's called Inventory. Open door, high cistern, wooden loosey, harvesters hanging, mangle in passageway, long key and lock, block of wood dangling, wall clock, drop leaf table, pressure cooker beans, cherry pattern tablecloth, jug of bisto, crumbs, Pink, yellow Battenberg, splashes of dark tea. Row of egg cups with faces, coronation mugs on hooks, fan heater, soap rack and nail brush, crossword, scrabble, notelets, china pugs. Wooden chest, scissors, four pairs in a pot, bottom hollowed chair, tapestry owls, knitted squares, insulin, flashcards, smelling salts, football scores. Duffel coat, Yates selected, record player, hole in rug, Beatles mags, Everly Brothers, coal, hairspray, mortarboard, old bear. Marmite sarnies, grease proof paper, rubber band, trousers nipped in bicycle clips, whistling, waders, model ships, bundle of love letters, postmarked Iceland. Slow worms in the compost, nettles tucked around the roast, Egg and chips, chocolate shaved off soldiers' rations, upright piano, sit-up straight chairs, tall, steep, dark stairs, canaries, cages, linseed and cuttlefish, burbling song, beak scritch and wing flutter, briquetted newspaper, shop floor, shoe brushes, Engels, our father. Lord, keep us safe this night, secure from poking fingers, Black knees, curls in papers, legs in drawstring bloomers, candle out, pillow, quilt, two feet by each ear. The next few poems have a Liverpool connection. Um, the first is called Argyle Street, which is a, it's a road near the Birkenhead docks which are really beautiful, just as the Liverpool docks are, and um, extremely bewildering <laughs> to orientate yourself in them. But. 
it's a road parallel to those. Argyle Street, 1983. The stone sets ripped from Argyle Street were dumped by the council for free as a heat heap of odd angles in our drive on a day when heat stared you in the face. Clumps of tar, hard as the carapaces of cockroaches, sweated and oozed at the edges, their soft beneaths asking to be scraped off with a finger and lodged forever under a nail. I climbed up on corners, stiff sandals sticking. Air shimmered, a breeze flounced my dress, clearing the last fadings of smells packed down between cracks by wheels and feet, and now dislodged. Lathered bits and leather, salt, cattle, whiskey, roca, sole, strong soap, colder, slop, stale beer, spit, the past beneath the tarmac, fixed in black, but with its surface rippling white, like the river. When I was growing up, there was, um, on Church Street in Liverpool, there was a newspaper seller with a very distinctive cry. Um, so this is about him. <laughs> it's called Liverpool Echo. He's not there anymore, the man outside Marks and Sparks. Twice a minute, every day, for years, he shouted, Go! It was always winter and always dark. His go was church loud, hollow and cold. A blast of mist shaped by his mouth's warm hole into an O oh, as irrevocable as crematorium smoke. Wiping out the socks and lighters three for a pound, ladies, as it hacked across the drawn strings of his throat. A relentless prophet in a worn thin donkey jacket. His cover was the smudgy newspaper he sold. Let someone draw his outline on the brick in chalk. His silence, like his noise was, is that hole when twilight traced around the skyline, when the lit up tower restaurant was a place you'd never go. While on the Mersey, ships arrived and left as shadows, and foghorns joined their gloom to his go. While flurries of starlings kept breaking up the dark, singing particle swarms, black hearts numb with cold. He was always there, the man outside Marks and Sparks. Twice a minute, every day for years, he shouted, go. This is the story of how my, my parents met in Liverpool. Hope Street, 1966. They met for the first time by that radiator in the Brahms section of the Philharmonic pub, he told me. It was Hope Street, 1966. She asked him where he came from and he said, over the water, which she thought meant Poland, she told me, because of the black Polonek, the bag of herrings and rye bread from Popper Volensky's. How was she to know he meant Rock Ferry? She fought her corner, had to seal him to her. Nothing had ever been so important, she told me. She was witty, beautiful, sharp, he told me. The rest, he choked on, just said when he walked her home past Sefton Park that night and kissed her, he knew he'd never let her go again. <clears throat> I'm going to finish with, um, with four poems from the sequence of, which is the second half of this book. I have to be honest with you, they're quite hard for me to read. <laughs> um, they're about my mum who died in 2008. And um, this first one is called Book of Hours. <clears throat> but 
ours was to be a book of years, not months, not weeks, not days, not minutes which pass too fast to see. Hours are no measure for our happiness. Let us at least have days, let us have one per page. In every frame, a day of golden light. Look, you're smiling, dazed by the brilliance of life. I'll put years into the margins, make decades of each leaf, each stream, each forest thick with beasts. I'll have the oceans there too, and the moon, the earth's red core and cosmic string. Each page so busy and thronging, we won't see the digits changing. This one has an epigraph from um, Robinson Jeffers' De Rerum Virtute. It means that the world is sound, whatever the sick microbe does, but he too is part of it. Sick world. World, whenever from now on I see a quarry, a mine, a scar, a bruise on your surface, something plundered, stolen, taken, tainted, poisoned, contaminated, spoiled, but still beautiful, still alive, I'll think of her and mourn you both. At the door. At the door of this house, we need a box in which to post our troubles as we arrive. Troubles must not enter this house, only lightness and smooth cheer, bunches of gerberas and jokes. If we're to keep up the walls of this house, small things must not be made big, big things must be made small. The ticking bomb of this house is guarded by a sentry who may shout to cover his deafness. We who open the door of this house must enter stripped of clocks or watches, although you know what time it is. At the door of this house, we need a box in which to post our troubles as we leave. I'm going to finish with the title poem of the book, um, exactly my own length. So Coleridge was out on the fells one day um, walking um, when he found a rectangular hollow in a rock, a coffin shape. So he thought he'd get in and try it for size. So he got in and he lay down and found it very comfortable and fell asleep. And he wrote in his notebook afterwards, exactly my own length. There I lay and slept. It was quite soft. If I'm allowed hope, no, hope is allowed while we talk. I hope for you one of those coffins found in evening light on a summer walk. Say a sheltering hollow in the heather, marked by a wind quiffed hawthorn, rounded, sweetened and softened, by clumps of sheep wool and droppings where the ground is still heard warm. Or a shallow stickleback stream under the beaches in flickering light on a bed of flat stones with the water's cool fingers untangling your hair until you're all flowing and green. Or a long narrow gap in a smooth rock, your own length, the fit exact and soft enough to give up thought for sleep with a sycamore tree to shade your face, a foxglove to flower at your feet. One of those coffins that makes you think, here I'd be happy to stop a while. Here I've found the measure of my life. What else is there but sun and heather and bees? What else could I be but part of this? Although this is also 
the never hoped for slow sucking bog on the darkening moor that forces you to watch yourself slide feet first into its changeless archive of petrified time and trapped light. Hope? The bog has no answer for the sea that bides at the bottom of the coombe, has nothing to say to its tides and waves, its colours and creatures, changing and free. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.